Gimp Dixon? That'd be me. You mind? Help yourself. Name's Bonner. Joe Bonner, in case you're interested. Why would I be? Doyle Novus sent me. I got nothing to say to Doyle Novus. Two hundred dollars. I already told Novus. I got no use for his money. My land ain't for sale. Well, you got it wrong there, Gimp. See, this here money's for me. To settle up with you. Joe Dean Bonner, professional killer. A man who enjoys the taking of life as much as he does outwitting the law. But then, he has yet to meet the dead man's gun. In the American West, a gun touched by evil passed from hand to hand changing the lives of all who possessed it. Its origin unknown, its dark legend grew, till it came to be known as the dead man's gun. Well, good day to you, sir. And welcome. I'll be with you shortly. You're new to town. Passing through or planning to stay a while? Don't look to me like there's much reason to stay. Where's everybody? Some church prayer meeting or something? Could be. If this was Sunday, that is, but it's Monday. <laughs> so where is everybody? Well, going about their business, I'd say, but uh, you'll see them. You'll see them soon enough. Hear that sound? That kind of snap, crack. Wind. Street boards creaking. Yeah, that could be it. <laughs> <laughs> you find a lot of things funny, don't you, old man? I guess maybe I do. This town got a name? No. Town with no name. Anybody needs to get here. 
seems to get here, all right. Well, it don't matter to me none. I don't intend to be here long. That's so. Needs fixing. Seen some use. Hammer sticks. Cylinders worn. A gun like this will miss fire. Just might fail you when you think you need it most. Well, you know your craft, old man. That I do. I know a lot of things. For instance, I know you're a serious man. A man to be feared. I am. And you, sir? Who do you fear? No man alive. Mr. Whipley. Alistair Whipley. Here for you, sir. Your pistol will be ready tomorrow. Tomorrow? I wasn't planning on staying that long. Best I can do. There's a rooming house across the street. Folks say the beds are soft and the food's real good. If you're feeling a little light in your holster, I could make you a temporary loan of one of my excellent firearms here. Yeah? Your choice. Take your pick. That one. You sure that's the one you want? I said so, didn't I? I guess you made your choice. How about a trade? I got some money. Not for sale. Why not? It's my favorite. He only get it temporary. You like that room and house. Thanks. Final hour, huh? Well, at least it's got a name.
Got a room. Dollar a night. What are you doing here? I suppose you could say it's kind of irregular, me recommending my own room and house, but then it is the only place in town. You own this place? I'm just a man who wears many hats. Yes, sir. Idle hands do the devil's work. That's what folks say, isn't it? Where's my room? Well, just follow me. I take care of everything around here. Like I said, I'm here for you, sir. I think you'll find you stay with us, uh, real memorable, Joe. How'd you know my name, old man? Open this door! When I get my hands on you. Whipley, what the hell's going on? How you keep popping up like that? That'll be Judge Whipley, Mr. Bonner. Judge. A man of many hats. <laughs> and I suppose this here is your court. Like I told you, I'm here for you, Joe. In the matter of the people versus Joe Dean Bonner, this court is in session. You listen to me, you crazy old bastard. I've had just about enough surprises for one day. Joseph Dean Bonner, you are charged with six counts of murder in the first degree that you did willfully Purposely and with malice. Oh, man. I should hope for your sake this is some kind of game because I'm about to air out your brains. And now you unlock that door. How do you plead, Mr. Bonner? Plead. I'll show you how I plead. I take it that is a plea of not guilty. Shall we begin? Yeah, jury, Joe. Recognize them? You should. You got a notch on your gun for each one of them. These are the six men you shot and killed so far in your short but illustrious career. I don't believe this. You will, Joe. You will. For the record, as they are also witnesses for the prosecution, and since you never took the time before you shot them, allow me to introduce them. Danny Cates, cowboy. You killed him in a saloon. Sheriff Neely, lawman, merely attempting to do his duty. A stagecoach driver, you may recall, he didn't hand over the strong box quite fast enough. Hank Kennard, bank teller, another robbery victim. Jonas Dobbs, store clerk. You took money to kill him, as you did with Gimp Dixon. This ain't really happening. This is some kind of trick, right? 
They will decide your fate, Joe, just as you once decided theirs. I wonder if you appreciate the irony in that. I surely do. Are you the devil? Are you? No, not the devil, son. But I know I'm real good. If you're not, then who the hell are you? I think the question we're really asking here, Joe, is... Who are you? Well, gentlemen, shall we begin? I believe I was the first person Joe killed. You're not real. I know you ain't real. You can't be. You can't be. You're dead. I ain't afraid of no dead man. It was in the dugout saloon. I'd been on the trail for six weeks. When I rode in, I just wanted to have some fun is all. Fun? Huh? Him and his friends was mocking me. Yeah, I shot him all right, but it was self-defense. Tell him. And it better be the truth. I was feeling pretty good. He was standing at the bar. I didn't know him. He didn't know me. I got to laughing. I didn't mean nothing by it. It just kind of happened. Oh, sorry, mister. I tripped. So what's funny? Nothing. No. <coughs> no, there's something funny. <laughs> Must be you're laughing. <laughs> you laughing at me, am I? Funny? I don't think so. No, no. <coughs> Pay attention, then. If you laugh at me, you're laughing at one mean son of a bitch. <laughs> Don't look at them. I'm talking to you. I didn't even have a gun. Before I could. Joe shot me dead. You had a knife. See? Self-defense, just like I said. If I'd have let you, you'd have stuck it in my guts if you could. It was his own fault. He shouldn't have pushed me. He shouldn't have laughed. He pushed you, and he laughed. So you shot him dead. Is that right, Joe? You ask me. He got just what was coming to him. No one's asking you, Mr. Bonner. It's not Danny Cates who's on trial here. It's you. Well, maybe, maybe I didn't have to kill him, but I sure... Maybe you could have given him a chance. Hell, nobody ever gave me a chance. I believe Sheriff Neely did. It was up to me to bring Joe in. I wished he'd give up. There was extenuating circumstances. A witness said... Danny went for his knife, but another said, and Joe said he was glad he shot Danny. 
I tracked him across three counties. Caught up with him in full. Damn you, Neely. You never said nothing about no circumstances. I was just a green kid scared out of my wits facing down the law, man. I knew what you was thinking. You was taking me in dead or alive, and I'd be a hell of a lot less trouble to you dead. Jesus, I damn near wet my pants. <laughs> Give me the gun, Joe. I was hoping he'd give up peaceable. I don't want no trouble with but you. But I got a bad feeling that he wasn't gonna. That's when I saw the kid. I held my fire. Didn't matter to Joe. He just plain gunned me down. I guess you never did wet your pants, eh, Joe? I'm getting real tired of all this. You're seeing everything from their side, and that's not fair. Yeah, I gunned him down. I did it to him before he did it to me. I had no choice. Anybody can see that. I guess you also had no choice when you robbed that bank, eh, Joe? One thing just led to another. What the hell was I supposed to do? Every John Law in the territory was after me for shooting that troublemaking cowboy and that sad excuse for a lawman. I couldn't exactly get myself a regular job now, could I? I had to eat. We all have to eat, Joe. I had three children, a fourth on the way. I never dreamed that day Joe Bonner walked into the bank that I'd be throwing off the mortal coil. I'd give him the money he wanted as fast as I could. I didn't want to die. That's it? That's it. That, that's all of it. on my face. And then he shot me. Just like that. For no other reason. That's it. I ain't listening no more. I've had enough. What do you expect me to do here? Your honor, repent? Well, they say repentance is good for the soul. Do you repent, Joe? For them? Every one of them would have killed me first if they had the chance. I repent nothing. You might get to redeem your immortal soul. Now, don't give me that old fairy tale. You're beginning to sound like someone I used to know and I don't like, and that's making me mad. Now, I don't know how you're doing this, old man. If you're some kind of magician or what. But I'll tell you this. I don't give a damn for you or for any of them. Perhaps, Joe, we should get to something you do care about. What's he doing here? I didn't kill him. Although I wished I did. He deserved killing more than any of them. Why is that, Joe? Ask him. Why don't you see if he'll tell you? I tried to raise you, Joseph, the right and proper way. You and your brothers. Your mother and I worked hard to give you all a good and decent home. We preached respect for our fellow respect. man. Why don't you tell him about how you used to beat me with a switch, old man? Is that right, Reverend Bonner? You beat your son with a switch? There are some things more painful to give than to receive.
Joseph. You want to know what I mean? That's why. You stole from that collection basket. And it wasn't the first time, Joe. You'd been warned. You knew it was wrong. You knew it was for the poor. The poor. It was always the poor. We were the poor. We got scraps. Because you care more about strangers than you did about us. For me, your own son. We thank thee, Lord, for the food. Where's the meat? There ain't no meat in this stew. Joseph. I snared a rabbit this morning, and you said you'd cook it for me, Mom. You gave it away, didn't you? Mrs. Kilgore has her little ones to feed. With Mr. Kilgore gathered to his maker, your mother and I thought it the Christian thing to do. But there'll be other rabbits, I'm sure. We thank thee, Lord, for the food we're about to receive. Am I correct in assuming, Reverend, it was more than once that you went hungry to raise your sons? They were young and they were growing. Oh, no. Don't let him do that, Whipley. Don't get caught up in his high and mighty preach it damn horse manure. I had more than my share of hungry nights. We have a duty to those around us less fortunate. You know that, Joe. I know it's a sacrifice. But... Hell with your sacrifices. When was it going to be my turn, old man? Tell me that. Didn't I deserve a turn? Didn't I deserve something for myself? Nothing I ever did pleased him. My God-fearing brothers. Always spouting about how they wanted to grow up to be just like Pa. Hell. I knew from the second I could crawl, I never wanted to be like you. Joe Bonner ain't never gonna be poor. You hear me? Joe Bonner ain't never gonna give a damn about the less fortunate. You believe that, Father? Sir. I failed you, son. I know I did. For that, I apologize. I could lead my flock. I could not lead my boy. To fail with one's own son is to be a failure. Pa, you're not a failure, Pa. I get respect everywhere I go. I always got money in my pocket. I eat steak every night. I got this. Now, I thought you said you had something I cared about. Hello, Joe. Ellie, is that you? I never thought to see you again. You look different, Joe. I guess I do. I have to change my appearance from time to time. Why do you do that, Joe? Some people. Best they don't find me. That's sad, Joe. 
That's so sad. There was good in Joe Bonner back then. I could see it in him. He was wild and he got into some trouble. But I was 17. Joe was 19. I loved him. And I know he loved me. See my girl. Am I your girl, Joe? Any man says different. Gonna need a bullet. Joe, but why do you talk like that? Why do you always want to hurt people? I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> Joe, you know I can't say long. If I'm not home soon, my daddy. Oh, the hell with your daddy. You gonna make him eat a bullet too, Joe? No, of course not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, Joe. Well, you said we don't have much time. Why are we wasting it with dumb talk? Please, stop. We must... I can't stop. I love you, Ellie. Do you, Joe? I always want to be with you. I can't stop thinking about you. We'd have our own home, farm. We better go. It's late. I did love you, Ellie. I still love you, Joe. Still love you. Then why did you leave her? It's not so bad, Joe. We get married, no one will know. We could take the 20 acres my daddy offered. I know it's not much. You but... want me to be a farmer? You said you love me. I just thought. I never said nothing about no baby. And you know how I feel about this. I told you over and over I ain't never gonna be a dirt farmer. That's what my pa does when he's not preaching. That's what your daddy does. And look at him. They ain't old, but they look a hundred. Just like everyone else around here, born poor, die poor, never seen nothing, never been nowhere. I can't be like them. Well, what are you saying, Joe? I'm sorry, I, I gotta go. <laughs> what do you mean, go? Goodbye, Ellie. Joe! Joe, come back! Please! <laughs> I never stopped loving you, Ellie. I came back. I did. I came back to find her, but she was gone. All of them sold the farm, moved away. What was I to do? Go after them. I was so scared, Joe. Scared to have that baby alone. I waited for you to come back. I was sure you would. 
I waited a long time. Till I started to show and couldn't hide it no more. But I wanted you so much, Joe. And I wanted your baby. I also wanted to die. Ellie. Wait. Forgive me, please. You never wanted that baby, Joe. Not for a minute. But you weren't man enough to tell her. You just ran away. I couldn't help it. I couldn't be any more to that kid than my father was to me. I didn't know nothing else. I was scared, too. I was too young to have a wife and a kid. Couldn't spend the rest of my life farming. Scratching in the dirt from dawn to dusk to feed them. I was only 19. Ellie was 17. Well, I couldn't let myself end up like my pa. No, sir. I needed more than that for me. For you, Joe. It was always for you, wasn't it, Joe? That's right. And why the hell not? If I didn't spend my whole life looking after Joe Bonner, I'd be no better off now than them. You still don't get it, do you, Joe? Get what? Life. It's not about you, Joe. It never was. Is that right? Then what's it about? It's about that cowboy sitting over there, Danny Cates. And Gimp Dixon, the dirt farmer. And Jonas the clerk and Hank Kennard and Sheriff Neely and the stagecoach driver. It's about Ellie and your father. It's about all of them, Joe. And everyone out there. It's about them, Joe. It's not about you. I know what you're doing, old man. You're trying to make me out to be some kind of evil thing. Well, I can tell you something about that. Do not even attempt to lecture this court on the nature of evil, Mr. Bonner. I assure you, you'll be well out of your depth. Now, I think we dragged this on long enough. Has the jury reached a verdict? You're guilty, Mr. Barner. Damn you! Damn all you bastards to hell! I killed you once. I can kill you all again. Mr. Bonner, this is justice. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> By your own choice, Joe. Like all of us, you were born with free will, but you chose that gun you hold in your hand just <laughs> like you made all your choices. You chose to leave your sweetheart with child. She couldn't live with the pain and the shame and the grief, so she killed herself and the baby boy she was carrying. That's right, Joe. She killed the son you will never see. I didn't know. I didn't know. That was your choice. Just as it was when you shot poor Danny here, robbing him of his good life, 
It wasn't yours to take, but you took it anyway. And you took Seraph Neely's and Hank Kennard's. Stop it! I'm sorry! Whibley, I'm sorry! Just please, let me out of here. You can leave any time you want, Joe. We're about done here. It's not locked anymore. <laughs> See for yourself. You better not be lying to me. One more thing before you go. You said you were sorry. I... truly sorry. That's what I thought. Goodbye, Joe. You think it's true what they say? A man revisits his whole life just before his death? I don't know. Could be. The good book says, as you sow, so shall you reap. Especially true when one chooses the dead man's gun. <laughs>